It feels as if the entire community of Hasbro Heights is here in East Rutherford, but so too is New Milford as these two schools battle for a section championship. Welcome to MetLife Stadium, the home of the New York Jets and the New York Giants, as the second seed, New Milford, takes on the top-seeded Aviators of Hasbro Heights. Hello, everyone. Welcome with Tadra Hunt, David Resnick. This is the North One Group One State Championship game. What can we expect from today's matchup? Well, I'll tell you, David, this is what New Jersey high school football is all about. These two Bergen County teams are only separated by about seven miles. They scrimmage against one another on an annual basis. The two coaching staffs know one another. They're friendly, but they'll have to put that friendship aside for today as they play for a state title. Now, they've done so three times with New, New Milford taking two of those titles, but Hasbrook Heights has won the last seven games in this matchup, so it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top today. Speaking of proximity, Bill Wild, the head coach of New Milford, grew up about 10 minutes away from MetLife Stadium, a graduate of Rutherford High School. He has 65 career wins as he looks to capture the Knights' first section title in two decades. On the other end, Nick Del Calzo is a Hasbrook Heights lifer, a graduate of the school back in 1971. He entered this season 12th active in New Jersey in wins. He is looking for his third section final championship as head coach. Well, the Knights are united here in 2016, but they know they have a tough task ahead as Hasbrook Heights looks to cap off their first undefeated season in 40 years. New Milford and Hasbrook Heights battles next on News 12 Varsity. You're watching the NJSIAA on News 12 Varsity as the scene is set for New Milford and Hasbrook Heights in the North One Group One Championship. The third member of our broadcast team is Amanda Puglisi, and she's down on the field. Well, David, you said it before, you know, New Milford and Coach Wild, they're looking for the Knights' first title in just about two decades. And Coach Wild had a simple message for his team. He said, guys, we're in the championship game, and this game is going to have a lot of peaks and valleys. There's going to be great things happening, and there's going to be some not great things happening. It's all about the team that can play a solid four quarters, and the team that will win, basically, is going to be the team that can kind of go through all those peaks and valleys. So that's how New Milford started their morning. Now, Hasbrook Heights, they started their morning with the police escort to MetLife. And I'm not just talking about the team, guys. I mean the entire community. Everyone met at the football field. The police commissioner met them there as well. And like I said, a police escort that started with the team bus and ended with the very last fan car. So you know both of these fan bases are looking forward to this morning's game. So we know everybody from Hasbrook Heights arrived to MetLife Stadium safely. Thanks very much, Amanda. We'll be checking in with you throughout the game. With Todrick Hunt, David Resnick, and Hasbrook Heights has dominated this series as of late, although they have not played in quite some time. And we started today off going over the championship history of these two teams as Hasbrook Heights and New Milford battle for a North One Group One championship. The scene is set on this Sunday morning in East Rutherford. And it's just a beautiful day for football. These guys are revved up, ready to go, and we got a great game on tap. Underway for a title as it's collected near the 15 yard line. And across the 30 for the first offensive possession here for New Milford. Christian Correa brought it back. And this sets up the offense for Ryan Picnic and company at the 33. And I can't wait to see Correa in action. 2,300 yards on the year. State best, 33 touchdowns. The guy can really get the job done. Looking to see him work in between the tackles. That is the challenge today for this Hasbrook Heights defense. Can they stop Correa? On first down, the answer is yes. And right off the bat, they rally to the football, create a tackle for loss. Put New Milford off schedule. Watch the penetration. Spin off blocks. Nice job with the wrap and get him down on the ground. 
These guys are penetrating, splicing. Way to find it. Jordan Wexler with the TFL. It's second and 13. Right back to Correa, finding space up the middle as he gets past the line of scrimmage and pulverized out to the 40. A lot of impressive talent in this game, Todrick, but who are your impact players? I'll tell you, there are four very, very good ones. We already talked about Correa and what he's accomplished on the field this year. It will be exciting to see what he can do today. Matt McElroy on the defensive side of the ball, absolute playmaker, 6'2", 225, FBS caliber player. Uh, Cotron can also uh, get it done through the air and down on the field turf. And Ayurado is just a headhunter. He'll put you on your back. Correa is the deep back out of the eye. He gets the call on third and four, fighting for every inch that he can as he creeps out towards the 45. Three carries good enough for a first down for the Knights. And you can see why he averages almost eight yards per carry and a lot of that yardage comes after first contact due to his lower uh, lower leg drive. He keeps those legs moving. He plays with low pad level, uh, head down and he gets the job done. A physical guy in between the tackles. It's a tough job to pick up that many yards running inside. Second in the state coming in with 2,279 and he's gashing the Aviators defense for more here in the first quarter and I think what's most impressive about his rushing yard total coming into this one he's done it on only 291 carries uh, so he's relatively fresh he's got a lot left in the tank he's got fresh legs as you see he continues to pound the football and get the job done with eyes downfield picked up a couple downfield blocks which is what you need as a runner to create big plays there is no mystery for this Knights offense 72 percent of the rushes out of the backfield they call on number 21. Five straight rushes by Correa. And after that first TFL by Jordan Wexler, it's been the Knights up front, Dodger, creating a nice push. And what I like most about what they're looking to do is they're running north-south. You know, when you got a downhill back, that's what you have to look to do as opposed to getting those guys going east-west and doing the defense a favor. And that is the offense summed up in one picture <laughs> in 21 we trust That's Christian right. Correa will be carrying the rock big time today 38 carries in the semifinal victory over Becton on second and six Correa again between the tackles nice job in the middle of the defense Sean O'Malley helping with the tackle for the aviators nice job here on power See the little kick out by 77. Clears up a lane. Ready to burst up inside. Keep those feet churning. Got some big bodies up front looking to create push. Get leverage. They're on a bit of a roll here. Bill Wild has to like the way that the Knights have started out offensively. It's third and four. Needing the 30-yard line. And Correa on his sixth straight carry comes up about a yard and a half short. And this is old school football. I mean, you line up in the eye, everybody's at the line of scrimmage, the defense is at the line of scrimmage, and you say, hey, you know exactly what we're going to do. Can you step up and stop us? If the answer is no, you're going to have a very, very long day. John Ayurado comes up with the tackle. It's fourth and two, and Correa is hit behind the line. There he is again, the senior linebacker with the stop. Ayurado on two consecutive plays, showing his ability. Not the biggest kid at 5'5", 165, but he certainly might have the biggest heart out there on the football field. Watch him read and react, get squared to the line of scrimmage, get a good wrap, lasso down low, and finish. He was unblocked, Todd, right <laughs> through the line. I'll tell you. They want to get a hat on that guy. He starts in the backfield offensively for the Aviators as Frank Quatrone finds his big playmaking threat, Josiah Purdy, for the first down reception. Purdy was almost able to break that one, stuck his foot in the ground, got going back inside, eluded a tackler, had one more guy to beat inside, and he may have had a big play, but you see the burst, uh, you see the quick twitch, uh, the lower body acceleration. Uh, looking forward to see what he can do today. Patron, a dual threat, quarterbacking Hasbrook Heights. We saw him throw on first down. And we see him run on second. 
out across midfield and into New Field. Milford territory in a first down. And he was about six inches worth of separation away from a score. This is a young man that has over 20 rushing touchdowns on the year. So you certainly have to be aware of what he can do with his feet. 1,100 yards passing or 1,100 yards rushing, 700 yards passing, 31 combined touchdowns. Third different player getting a touch here on the opening drive for Hasbro Kites. John Iorado picks up a couple. Showing his prowess on the offensive side of the ball. The ultimate utility player does whatever it takes to help his team. It's the beauty of small school football, isn't it? Oh, I'll tell you what. These guys came out, supported. Uh, they absolutely love these guys. and want to see them win a state title today. Patron dancing behind the line, and he is sacked. Justin Hergerich, the cornerback, came on the blitz and took down Quatron. Does a nice job forcing things back inside. You have corners uh, that can do that. Does a nice little hedge there. Gets in the head of the decision maker. Gets off that edge and lassos for a play. Third and 12. Deep drop, Quatron dumps it off for a completion, but just a short game. It was right near the sideline for the tight end, Phil Miller. And before turning up field, he hit out of bounds. Sometimes you're just too wide open. So defensively, Hasbro Heights comes up with a stop. They get a first down over midfield, but this drive stalls, and the Aviators have to punt it away. This is a great punt for the Aviators. It stops inside the four. Great defensive field position for the Aviators. Got the job done on that drive. Now they can send their defense out to play against a running offense that doesn't necessarily thrive on the big play. So you give them a long field and force them to have a lot of work to do. Josiah Purdy, the punter, playing all three phases of the game. And Bill Wilde's team pinned back deep in its own territory. Starting at the four, Christian Correa dots the eye a couple yards deep into the end zone. On first and ten, Christian Correa leaps through a hole and is pushed down around the ten. We saw Farley split out way wide to the left side of the field and in this offense, for the most part, that's just utilized to remove a defensive player from the box to allow them to run the football inside. Now, they could watch that corner to see exactly how he plays this, and if he leaves that wide receiver uncovered or has his eyes too far inside, they may take a shot down the field to set him up a little bit later on in the game. Elijah Pastrana, a pulling guard, making the good lead block there to free Correa. Wow. Picked up six on first down. There's a flag down near the end of the run. Right here, Mike. Holding on the offense. First penalty of the game and is called against the offense of New Milford for a hold. I'll tell you what, they may have called the hole, but McElroy 10 just had the, the meanest drive block that led to a pancake. We'll take a look here. Look at 10 on the left side of the screen here. Puts his man down into the field turf, and that's the type of physicality that they'll have to come with today in order to win this state title. Are you talking football or brunch? <laughs> it is Sunday morning after all, and a perfect setting for a championship game. Christian Correa, another carry as he bangs bodies short of the 10. It was second down and seven, and he got out close past the nine-yard line. I'll tell you, what, what a lot of people overlook when, when assessing guy as a prospect at the next level is durability, and especially at the running back position. How durable are you? How many carries can we give you uh, without you coming out hurt on the other end? And Correa has been as durable as they come in for every snap, gets the ball the majority of the time, and produces. 
First drop back, and it's a pass to Correa. Out into open space, making a man miss, and picking up the first down for the Knights. Now that's impressive and something that he's worked on, catching the football out the backfield, out the flat, then got up the field, made a tremendous downhill cut to pick up the first. This is great vision here to make that first and second guy miss, then bowl forward uh, with, with a nose for the stick. So a tremendous start for the young man. They've got him going. He's got great momentum. He's feeling good about things. Ten carries for Correa and that catch on third down after 38 carries a week ago. Wide receiver screen complete. It was Ryan Pickenick finding Reese Farley on the outside. And so much for the guy split out totally wide to be a decoy. Now if you get him involved, that completely changes the offense. Absolutely. Nice little bubble screen look. The timing was a little bit off due to the pressure from the left side of the field. Uh, it wasn't the best throw. Uh, those other guys didn't get out in front. Those, those offensive linemen weren't able to quite get to that spot. But it's certainly a play to go back to. Looked like it was there. Four-yard completion. Two split out. The only two passes of the game came on the last two plays. Christian Correa up the middle and bottled up quite quickly. It's... Ayurado again, helped out by James Varga. Ayurado doing a nice job playing with tons of passion. They do a terrific job up front, too, tightening down these gaps, taking away any angles and submerging upon Correa. He's the type of guy you have to gain tackle, get multiple bodies to him, because he runs through arm tackles and one-on-one -on -one tackles. So you got to wrap him low and have multiple guys submerge on him in order to get him on the ground. Third and seven. 2.40 to go in a scoreless first quarter in the North 1 Group 1 State Final. Exchanged is fumbled. Covered up by New Milford. And Brett Kornberg saving possession for New Milford. But the Knights forced to punt. We got a nice battle here. The defenses has, have certainly shown up. They're playing. They're being opportunistic. Uh, they're getting off the field and giving their offenses an opportunity. Obviously, for New Milford, they were pinned deep. Uh, so to, to advance the football is certainly a good thing. Maybe they can flip field position on this punt. Justin Maletta punts it away. Collected on Hasbrook Heights side of the field. And the return for Phil Viola is into New Milford territory. Good field position here for Hasbrook Heights. So far, they've won that battle uh, due to that prior punt and defensive possession. Now let's see what they can do with it. Hasbrook Heights back in the championship game for the first time since a loss in 2013. Frank Quatrone on the read option. Picks up a first down. A slithery run for the senior quarterback. Slithery. <laughs> I like that word. A little fake jet quarterback keep. Watch the lead block from Ayurado. Gets his eyes inside. Gets the finish on McElroy. Nice job up in the middle on a 6'2", 225-pounder for a guy 5'5", 165. With so many guys going both ways, what is it like to see a similar opponent on the other side in the hole throughout the game. I'll tell you, man, it's, it's definitely a, a battle, a competition, and something these two guys have cherished for a long time. Ayurado goes down on the penetration. Jackson Brown makes the open field tackle. And I'll tell you, Jackson Brown, that's, that's an excellent football name. You better, you better get your work done if your name is Jackson Brown and you play this great game. Let's watch him get off the ball, penetrate, and be disruptive. Nice job bending down the line with leverage. He's not flying up the field, getting trapped. Does a nice job sticking his foot in the ground, changing direction, driving off that inside foot, and making a play. Second down 11 after the loss of one. Purdy in motion. Jet sweep fake to him. It's a quarterback run for about three yards to the right side and a flag at the end of the play. Going back to that last sequence for Jackson Brown, the way that he slipped off the tackle, is that good defense or a missed assignment on the line? Uh, not, not necessarily a missed assignment. Warning. This is a, we'll As for Kite. 
little sideline warning there. That's just a great play. I mean, sometimes you're blocked, sometimes you're not blocked, depending on scheme, things of that nature, whether the offensive zone blocking, whether they're one-on-one -on -one blocking, or what have you. But if you get off the ball, find yourself unblocked, you better be ready to bend down the line. You're certainly looking to be trapped at that point because usually when, when nobody's blocking you, a guard is coming, somebody is coming to wipe you out and wash you down. But to keep your eyes aside and make that play is great. Third and seven quarterback run for Frank Patron. He's buried at the 26. Final seconds coming off of the first quarter clock. And so Nick Del Calzo can think about his move on fourth down during the break. Defense, the name of the game here through the first 12 minutes. A lot of offensive firepower, including Christian Correa, but not a lot of running room. Ayurado making a series of tackles. But on the other side as well, New Milford has come out big here in the North One Group One final end of one on News 12 Varsity. Welcome back to MetLife Stadium. Start of the second quarter between New Milford and Hasbrook Heights. We are still scoreless. This is game seven of ten over three days from East Rutherford. Our next game coming up, North 1, Group 5. A rematch in the championship game. These two played last year with Passaic Tech coming out with a victory. And now Ridgewood looking to avenge their championship loss last year and complete a perfect season. The Maroons ranked 8th in our News 12 Varsity Tri-State Top 25. Always a great battle when those two teams lock up. That is coming your way next. But first, Frank Patron rolls out under pressure, and it's picked off. He looked for a receiver on the sideline, but Reese Farley said, I'll take this. And big DT Riley Matthews makes this play due to his penetration, disrupted, disruption, Gets within the line of sight of the quarterback with pressure. Forces the pick down the sideline. New Milford is in business. Frank Quatrone trying to make a play on fourth down. If they didn't pick it up, it was going to be New Milford ball anyway. So he took a chance on a short throw down the field. And Farley has the interception. Ryan Pickenick on his first run of the game. As New Milford continues to pound the rock here into the second quarter. Tyler Zadick with a nice kick out on the right side of the field. Love to credit those offensive linemen, those guys that sell out, give up their bodies so their teammates can move the football. That's what this great game is all about. Tough play up front, offensive line play, defensive line play. These games are one in the trenches. I know we're in the spread era, but if you don't have good bigs up front, diligent guys that play for one another, you can't win football games. Full house backfield look for New Milford. Still goes to Christian Correa. He runs up the middle. First down, New Milford. And again, that leg drive. I mean, I'd love to see a breakdown of his actual yardage after first contact. I mean, he keeps those feet moving and churning and picking up first downs. It's probably better than anybody in the state. You talked about pad level. He's a low runner, but how else would you describe his running style? He's just diligent, and he cares. He does the little things to keep the run going. A lot of guys go down looking to protect their bodies when they play for themselves. He plays for his teammates, and that's why his guys go out there and block so hard for him. 12 carries for 52 yards so far in the day. They fake it to Correa. Pickenick looks downfield. Everybody's covered, so he scrambles for a couple yards and gets popped right near the NFL logo. Josiah Purdy coming over to deliver a lick on the quarterback. Purdy making plays, as you said, in multiple facets of the game. Nice job finishing off the work here after penetration by his D-line. Looked like Pickenich had some time, couldn't find anything downfield, dropped the passing windows. Unfortunately, wasn't able to pick up as much yardage as he wanted to because of that young man. 5'11", 185-pounder. 
Purdy already with a offensive catch, a defensive tackle, and a great oh, oh, oh. punt. Bootleg fake, picking it, spinning away from the D. Taken down in the open field, shy of the 45, and two yards short of a first down. And just a great fake. Causes that DN to crash down inside. Gives them the edge. Gets outside, didn't quite pick up as much as he would have liked through the good tackling off the edge from the cornerback position. It's a big, long guy to be running the football. Purdy got there first. Dylan Oriema finished off the quarterback. As New Milford faces a third down and three, they converted half of their opportunities so far. Correa off tackle left. And he squares his shoulders to move the chains. He squares his shoulders being a, a key phrase that we'll often use with Correa. Does a nice job squaring up for contact. He's not one of those backs that looks to get skinny in the hole. He's looking to get great leverage on you so he can utilize that lower body power and finish off the run. As you see there, watch the defender. Who's flattened out here? The offender or the defender? Purdy chops him down with help from Travis Culkin. Again, the state's second leading rusher already carrying it 13 times for 56 yards. Had an additional touch for nine. And a player is down for Hasbrook Heights. And we talked about Correa, and it was it was him uh, that ran that football right over the top of Purdy and left him with a couple battle scars. And that's what you're going to see today, and that's what you got to be prepared for whenever you defend against New Milford. This guy is going to bring it, and he's going to bring it all day. Top two seeds are playing for the North 1 Group 1 Championship. As Hasbrook Heights, the number one seed, made easy work of Saddlebrook. And then a closer contest with Creskill. As for New Milford, coming up from the bottom of the bracket, they had easy work in the quarterfinals as well. S smooth through Becton. And now Hasbrook Heights and New Milford battling for this North 1 Group 1 championship here at MetLife Stadium. Perhaps the top seed tested a bit more entering this championship game. Their matchup with Creskill just the second time in 10 wins that the final result was under 10 points. Player down was Josiah Purdy. Got himself back up and over to the Hasbrook Heights side. First and 10 at the 42. Quick out. It's complete to the perimeter, and Nick Klein has it for the Knights. And they're going to have to look to work in the pass along with this run, although Correa has really gotten going. He's only averaging 4.3 yards per carry today. His prior lowest yards per carry was 4.9 earlier this season. So Hasbrook Heights bending but not breaking. you got to be able to throw the football a little bit to open things up inside. they got eight guys stacked in the box inside on almost every single down. you got to spread those guys out a little bit. Nick Klein with his first reception, now lining up wide again. Pickenick having trouble with the exchange. Picked up the football initially. Hasbrook Heights signaling, signaling that they have the football. Aviators ball. Sean O'Malley out of the pack with the pigskin. And that's the second time the Milford has had exchange issues early in this football game. Just takes his eye off the football. Was looking to get into his motion for either a handoff or fake handoff or whatnot. Ball just slips right out of his hand. And uh, unfortunately, those are the type of plays that you just can't have uh, against state championship competition on a big stage. Uh, you're basically giving these Hasbro Heights guys a gift, a gift they don't need. This is an undefeated team. They've got to be able to clean things up and uh, come out here and compete. The fumble recovery for O'Malley, the interception for Reese Farley of New Milford, and each team has turned it over once. There is room to the outside for the quarterback, Quatrone. Biggest offensive play of the day for the Aviators, and it comes from their do-it-all quarterback, Frank Quatrone. And I'll tell you, he may be a quarterback, but he's one of the more explosive runners in the state. Watch how he follows his lead block of 58. He gets a nice chip inside, eyes inside, seal, 
Patron does the rest of the work. Bouncing outside, sticks his foot in the ground, finds another angle to pick up additional yardage down the field. And this young man can really, really run. They may have to spy on him. 37 of Quattrone, 69 rushing yards on that last play. He turns around to hand it off, but first a flag. Dead ball foul, full start. Movements on, on the line by the Aviators. And so after a gain of 37, Hasbrook Heights goes back five. gets the play from Philip Viola who got it from head coach Nick Del Calzo over three decades as the head coach of Hasbrook Heights section titles in 1993 and 2007 first and 15 a little 4-4 look here from the new Milford defense Good job by the defensive line of New Milford. Jackson Brown with another tackle. McElroy also in on the play. The defensive leader for New Milford. Makes a ton of tackles. Great size. Competitive. Can run. Visited Syracuse recently. Has FBS prospects. Could have a big future ahead of him if he continues to develop. New name out of the backfield for the Aviators. It was Evan George Gaddis. But McElroy entering with 110 tackles, best on New Milford. That just in 10 previous games. So averaging more than 10 stops a contest. A looping snap is collected by Quatrone. Set off the timing a little bit of the quarterback draw. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage on second and 14. Patron for a quarterback does a nice job getting downhill. You take a look at his frame, his upper body is built powerfully. Can hang in there with those big bodies. You see Big 76 basically having to suplex him to get him off his feet. Look at those arms, those guns. That kid's a big athlete. That's Riley Matthews along with Jackson Brown controlling the interior of the line. Matthews have certainly had an impact early on in this football game. Third and nine. Quattrone goes to the air. Quarterback screen. Good for a first down and more. Philip Viola twisting down after breaking a tackle to move the chains. Off a little bubble screen. The timing was just a tad bit off. Give all the credit in the world to the receiver who fights out of this tackle of McElroy, the best defender on the New Milford roster. This is just great leg drive and determination from a smaller man against a way bigger man to finish, get up the field, and pick up that first down. Nice job by the lineman to get out and block on the perimeter. First red zone trip for Hasbrook Heights. Looking to break this scoreless draw with 4.30 to go in the first half. John Irado gets pummeled. Flag is down. That's three combined for the stop, including Nick Klein and Brent Hornberg. Holding on the offense. So a number of penalties for Hasbrook Heights on this drive. As they've marched inside of the 20 on a good mix of the pass and the run. Quattrone completing passes to a few different receivers on this drive. And getting help out of the backfield as well. As the penalty moves the ball back to the 25-yard line. First down and 22. Side run for Quatrone. Jahari Rogers there waiting for him. And they basically just snapped the football to him. A little delay. And had him look to go off tackle. You might need to be a little bit more creative than that, especially on first and 20 against this solid defense in New Milford. They're going to see that and react to it. It sort of looks, looks off the defense, doesn't really sell it too well. 
and they're able to converge on the quarterback. Second and 21, Quattro just spikes it into the ground, and that's intentional grounding. Immediately in pursuit, McElroy bursting through the line. On the offense. And another flag here against the Aviators. And on that play, you get to see just how big McElroy is as he bursts through the middle uh, of that offensive line. Great timing with that first step, reads it right, gets right down into that gap, drives it hard. And then he starts to hunt. Comes up with a big play. It's a big kid who can run. Has a great future on this football field. Leads this defense. Makes all the calls. He's had an up and down day so far, but has made some plays and is looking to really get going going into the half. Just a junior. Third and 42. Control over the middle, and it's broken up. Great job defending by Anthony Rivera. Quattro took a chance on the throw over the middle. And he's lucky it wasn't picked off. And just great protection, but that's just terrific help over the top from the safety position. Perfect technique. Has that right hand sort of corralled around the body. Comes across the body with that left hand to bat that ball down. Just a tremendous play. He wasn't happy he didn't get the pick, but I thought it was a great play. Another junior defensive star for New Milford. Fair catch called for and completed. Brett Kornberg. Some of the Knights wanted fair catch interference. No penalty marker on the flag on the field as New Milford takes over in a scoreless game. First and 10 from the 16. Good physical battle. As we watch New Milford go back to the huddle and decide on what they want to come out with. Good sized offensive line. There you see Correa. Having a good solid day, 65 yards on that field turf. Looking to get going even more. Play fake to Correa. Pickadick steps up and nearly gets picked off. It was all due to pressure. Great penetration at the line of scrimmage from Hasbrook Heights. They've been doing a nice job getting off blocks, being feisty, playing hard to the whistle with motor. Matt DiChiara nearly had the interception and stays down on the field. Pickadick took a hit at the end of the play from Sean O'Malley. The senior DT has been doing that for a long time. Getting off blocks with hands, locating his target, and bringing the wood. In an age of the spread and big posters and crazy pictures, both New Milford and Hasbrook Heights still the old traditional let me run over to coach to find out what we're running here. <laughs> and before the second down play, New Milford calls timeout. And they're going to talk about this one down in distance as well as 319 left in the half in a 0-0 game. I tell you what, it's been a competitive, exciting game despite the score. And they're going to look to figure out a way to put some type of points on the board simply because it's such a low scoring game any type of points uh, could potentially result in a victory for your team each team with a takeaway the field position has not been great as we look at new milford during the regular season they enter on a four game winning streak they've won their last four by 21 points per game and in some ways, that loss in October at Harrison turned the season around for the Knights after that touchdown defeat. They've been perfect. But you see a common theme there in those two losses. The defense uh, kind of let didn't quite play their best and allowed a lot of points uh, on the other side of the ball. So uh, that's certainly something that they'll look to. They're doing a great job here today. Um, a 0-0 score here. Guys finding the football, being explosive, making plays. Uh, McElroy all over the field, sticking his nose in things, and they're going to need that type of continued effort throughout the ball game to come out with a win. Both Hasbrook Heights and New Milford, part of the New Jersey Interscholastic Conference. The Knights lost to Pomp Pompton Lakes, who then lost to Hasbrook Heights for the inaugural championship. Christian Correa is free. 
Correa makes the cut, and he's off to the races. Christian Correa stepping away and into the end zone. Touchdown, New Milford. Well, I think that yards per carry may get a little bit of a bump. 84 in one big burst. And that's 14 carries for 140 yards, and the score for that young man is all of a sudden absolutely just changed this ball game. Brian Johnson does not make it 7 0. Christian Correa, you have just run for an 84 yard touchdown at MetLife in the North One Group One Championship. And the multiple layers of this run, first getting through the hole, making people miss, and then getting by him. And just a great block at the point of, point of attack. Right guard pulls left, kicks out the defensive end, opens up a hole. Correa does the rest. I was surprised that that's more of a blast there. But watch this. Second step, cuts inside, has another gear to outrun members of the secondary. Doesn't necessarily look like he's moving all that fast, but somehow was able to outrun those guys with diligence because he cares. That kid has a lot of heart. And just back to our point about this being such a defensive battle, low-scoring game, a big play like that can certainly flip that game in the favor of your team. 34th rushing touchdown of the season, now averaging 10 yards a carry after 84 on his touchdown run. And Hasbrook Heights did a really good job up until that point to limit and bottle up Correa. But he's that type of big play threat that could certainly break a big play. Hasbrook Heights, you're looking to respond here. Christian Correa with another touchdown, and Amanda Puglisi has more on the running back. Well, David, Christian Correa has the most rush. He has the record for the most rushing yards in a season. And one of those guys that he passed is Jeff Bliss, who's now on the coaching staff. Coach Bliss still has some records, though, that Correa hasn't touched. But it's been a really cool experience for the two of them this season. And Correa really looks at Coach Bliss as someone he can lean on and get great feedback. And let's be honest, guys, it's also a little extra motivation when you're the running back and your coach holds some of those records that you want. The name is... Not faceless, you know exactly who you're trying to pass as Correa now has over 2,400 yards on the season. Hasbrook Heights try to answer in the form of Frank Quattrone as Hasbrook Heights has all three timeouts and under three minutes to tie this game in the first half. Right, so if you're New Milford, you can't take your foot off the gas. Defensively, you can't rest uh, now that your offense was able to score. In order to make that score count, you've got to defend, get back off the field, and get the ball in the hands of your offense once again. But Quatrone, just toughness. We talked about his upper body strength. Look how he seeks out contact, delivers the boom, and finishes. Similar play as he runs forward. This time, first faking the handoff. Without breaking it down too much in general senses, why does one quarterback draw play work but not the next? <laughs> I'll tell you, it all has to do with how the defense uh, reads the play. Uh, if you read it properly, you're able to submerge on the quarterback and blow up the play. I personally hate quarterback draws as a play caller. Uh, just not a play I feel uh, super confident in, but when it does work, uh, it can prove to have huge dividends. The Hasbrook Height faithful wanting to see a tying touchdown. Instead, they'll see their quarterback go down. Rodgers. 149 to go in the first half. Big Ed Reinander with the finish. With the super bear hug. 7-6, Riley Matthews having himself a game. Made the prior play in on this play. Forces pressure. D-line is starting to get going. 
getting after it, making plays. They got some good size up front. These guys are playing with good motor. Nice battle in the trenches. Quattrone opened this drive with a solid run to set things up, but two short runs since. New Milford calling the timeout. 149 to go. Calling it on defense. And here's where you start playing chess because the rest uh, of these possessions, of these downs, are critical and could ultimately be the game in such a tightly contested battle, low scoring. Third and ten. Wide receiver screen complete. Open field look and a first down. They found Dylan Oriema on the move and into New Milford territory. And Oriema can really run too. Uh, nice job on the bubble screen. They release two linemen out in the flat. They do a decent job getting contact. Oriema does the rest. 90 seconds to go. Ayurado runs left. He's got a first down for Hasbrook Heights. Ayurado showing he, he's got a little east-west in him as well. Second time they've run that type of play where they go trips and then run to the strength, depending on those wide receivers, to get those one-on-one -on -one blocks on the outside, stay on their men, elbows inside, keep them contained so their backs can hit the hole. Shadows on the field here at MetLife. Quatrone bounces it outside left. And once again, meets, it, meets Jari Rogers, the senior defensive end. A lot of guys on that new Milford defense making plays, taking pride, looking to be the reason why this defense gets off the field. So it's Hasbro Heights that calls timeout, trying to preserve time for a potential tying touchdown drive. A graduate of 1971, Hasbro Heights, coached for the last 32 seasons. Their first undefeated season is on the line in 40 years. They were 12 and 0. All the way back then. And this is just a very good collective group that he has this year. A lot of blue collar guys, guys who love to compete, take a lot of pride in trying to maintain a perfect record for their head coach. Playing fast, playing hard. Second and 12. Another wide receiver screen. This one to Viola. Does not get out of bounds. So the clock continues to move inside of a minute. Still plenty of time, but you don't want to be standing around here. You want to be up to the line of scrimmage, have two, three plays in succession, have them ready, and get going. Patron buried in the backfield. And I'll tell you, man, look like Jackson Brown once again. Along with Justin Hugerich. Penetrating into the backfield. Doing a nice job clogging up those gaps up front. Aren't too many areas of the field to exploit. Great gap control and discipline. Talked a little bit about Jackson Brown. The 6'2 junior. Great frame. Just looks like an old school throwback football player. A snobber knocker. A little cool out there on the field, especially here at MetLife. No sleeves. Just waiting for the next play. Not breathing hard either. And his helmet with some discoloration near the <laughs> N and M. That's right. That's right. It's a hard-nosed guy right there. He's not messing around. He's worn out his lid. <laughs> Fourth down and seven. Deflected. Incomplete. Wow. McElroy again with the pressure. As well as Justin Hugerich. I don't know if this was a screen, but a lot of guys came free along the inside. Were able to blow up that play. Rodgers got his hand on it. At least the second time today where he felt he should have had an interception. Not meant to be as New Milford takes over. 36 seconds to go. At the 30, one line of thought 
is to take a knee in which New Milford is. The other thought, we've seen Correa score an 84-yard touchdown. Why not give him a couple of rushes, no? Well, uh, what I probably would have done is run a little play action there and take a shot on first down. And if you pick up something, you know, potentially let that dictate what you do throughout the rest of the drive. But, I mean, this is a state championship game. I know you want to play it safe and don't want anything bad to happen. You don't want an interception for a pick six and give up the momentum. But uh, I certainly think it may have been worth it. Hasbrook Heights to get the ball after halftime. New Milford decides that a 6-0 lead is enough. Heading into the locker room. In the first quarter, it was all about the defense. In the second quarter, we finally saw some points. But before that, some good defense. And then the highlight play of the first, Christian Correa, 84 yards to the house, and a six-point halftime lead for New Milford. Halftime of the North One Group One State Championship. 6-0 New Milford over Hasbrook Heights. Our halftime score here from MetLife Stadium. With a score like that, you would expect that defense was the story of the first half. And it was, as both teams had a takeaway. First yes. for New Milford, Reese Farley had the interception, and the Aviators returned the favor on a fumble recovery. He certainly did, and that got this defense going. As you said, the ultimate defensive battle. Hasbrook Heights gets in on the action with the fumble recovery, then get the ball to this man, Mr. Quatrone, who sticks his foot in the ground, changes direction, gets up inside, in that thing, picking up yardage, but it was New Milford with the ultimate answer. Mr. Correa hits that hole, sticks his foot in the ground, gets inside, but he goes in for six and puts New Milford on top after an explosive first half. 84 yards on the touchdown run for Correa, along with Catron, both of them, the offensive stalwarts, in a game in which yards have been tough to come by, and Hasbrook Heights hurt by penalties in one drive particular when they made it inside of the red zone. Relatively close game. Obviously, New Milford has the advantage in rushing yardage, uh, picking up over 80 yards on that Correa run. He has 140 yards, one score on 14 carries, also one catch for nine yards, 149 total yards in the game. So, so far, he's been the star of the game. Catrone right there behind him. Competitive ball game. Can't wait for the second half. Aviators get the ball to kick off the third quarter. Second half is next on News 12 Varsity. And we welcome you back to MetLife Stadium, North One Group One, NJSIAA Championship. All here on News 12 Varsity, part of our coverage of 18 games, 10 of which are here in East Rutherford. 6 0 is our halftime score. New Milford leads Hasbro Heights, Hadsbrook Heights. With Tadra Hunt, I'm David Resnick, and the third member of our broadcast team is Amanda Puglisi. Well, David, we talked about this earlier in the game. And for Coach Wild, he says his team needs to play a solid four quarters of football. Now, he's happy with the way the first two quarters went, especially the physicality that his linemen played with. And he says, you know, the only thing that we really need to work on is limiting our turnovers. Now, on the other side, Coach Del Calzo told me he thought his team did a good job of containing Correa for most of that half, with the exception of that long touchdown run. Now, they know Correa is the kind of player who's going to get that kind of yardage. They just need to do a little bit better job of limiting the overall damage. Damage. And as far as Jose Purdy, who we saw earlier in the first half, he went out. His return is questionable. That would be a big loss for Hasbro Heights if Purdy is out, the sophomore affecting all three phases of the game. And what's your take, Todrick, of the way the Aviators defended Christian Correa? I think they did a really, really nice job prior to that last play. Remember, he was limited uh, to around four yards per carry, his lowest production. Uh, on the year now obviously he exploded for over 80 yards uh, on the touchdown score and they can't feel too great about that but they did have a couple guys in position to bring him down they just didn't make those tackles so you got to feel pretty good about what you've done uh, up to this point containing him got to do a little bit better job getting him on the ground uh, but moving forward uh, offensively you got to be able to find something Catron has really got going uh, as far as on the ground but they got to figure a way uh, to finish some of these drives
fans getting into it as Evan George Gaddis is looking into the sun to receive the opening kick of the third quarter. Out to the 30 and no further. It was Phil Viola who cut in front of George Gaddis for the return. And after a scoreless first half for Hasbrook Heights, it featured a lot of Frank Quatrone as expected. Over 100 total yards in the first half. But where do you go here offensively if you're the Aviators? I mean, they've got to figure out a way to give New Milford something else to think about. I mean, if you're New Milford right now, you're keyed in on the quarterback and what he's doing and looking to spy him and follow him. So they've got to get some other guys going. There's one of those guys, John Ayurado, who runs to the right. Picks up about seven yards. Just the fifth possession of the game here for Hasbrook Heights. And I think most importantly to note is the time of possessions. Averaging about two and a half minutes per possession. Uh, not really able to hold on to the football long enough to get into long drives to really get the offensive line going, the running backs going, and the offense getting that confidence. That interception came after a drive that penetrated inside of the red zone and then penalties forced them out of it. First down pickup here by the Aviators. Again, nice job by Catrone. Good job at the point of attack by the offensive front. They've come out into the second half fresh and ready to put some points on the board as they run a couple new bodies onto the field. Fresh set of downs at the 41. Just underway here in the third quarter. The difference in this game, an 84-yard touchdown run by New Milford's Christian Correa. George Gaddis tries to stretch the field. Gets as far as the 44-yard line before being dragged out of bounds. Reese Farley as part of the crew to make the tackle. And you'll see McElroy gets a... Good first step here, just misses the ball carrier. Picks up a little bit of a chip, so he can't quite make that play, but certainly stretches out the back. Do a nice job getting over top of the play, slowing him up, so he wasn't able to turn up field. Officially marked at the 46, a five yard pickup, now second down. Designed one running play for the quarterback, Quatrone. He's over midfield, and another first down for the Aviators on this drive to open up the third. Little blast-type look. Nice action by the lead blockers, giving Quatrone a chance. You have a quarterback that can play power football like that. As you see, McElroy blocked in the hole. They've had some success getting a body on him, covering him up, and exploiting that creep crease off his hip. Drive started back at their own 31. Now from the 48 of New Milford. The toss to George Gaddis, and a flag is down. It's like Anthony Rivera trips up the back at the end of the play. It's a nice job with the shoestring tackle. Holding on the offense. But it's off or not. Victor Simon, our referee, making the holding call. And he'll make it again, but the same result with 10 yards from the spot. And already early, we've seen the Aviators try to run to the edge in the perimeter of the defense. Well, they're trying to mix things up offensively, which I think is a great idea. We've seen his trips look. Now they've run directly at that trips look and also used it as a decoy to go back to the short side of the field. Let's see what they do here. It's a wide receiver screen to the wide side of the field. As part of those three wide receivers at the top, Dylan Oriema has the reception, and they make back all of the yards lost on the holding call. And they should look to this look for the rest of the game that three wide receiver set trips to one side of the field as I said prior 
They'll run to it. They'll run that bubble screen to the strength. They'll also throw the football away from it. So you keep the defense guessing. And maybe that's something that they can look to exploit. They probably sat down and looked at that at the half and said, let's open things up a little bit. Out of the pistol, Oriema will hand it off. Through a hole is John Ayurado. And a first down. This is a great drive so far for Hasbrook Heights. We talked a little bit about these guys not being able to sustain the drive, doing a great job to start the quarter, running the football, mixing in the pass with the bubble screens. But most importantly, this is tough-nosed football where they're running right down the heart of the new Milford defense. Third first down of this drive. It continues at the 37. Ayurado still on his feet. Pushed down inside of the 20. Nearly a 20-yard run for John Ayurado to set up Hasbrook Heights in the red zone. A little jet sweep handoff. Great block by five. Just getting a piece as a downfield receiver. That's all you got to do sometimes is just get a piece. Patron's been keeping that football. This time he hands it off. Defense wasn't ready for it, paying so much attention to the quarterback. Oriema with a catch on this drive, a crucial block as well. George Gattis lowers the shoulder. He is squared up by Anthony Rivera. And Farley actually makes that play by forcing the running back to bow his run outside of where he wanted to. Allows his defense to get over the top and to the sideline where they cut off his angle with great pursuit. Bill Weil telling Amanda that he really liked the physicality by New Milford in the first half and Anthony Rivera continuing it into the third quarter. Just a pickup of one down to the 18 for second down. Quattrone bounces it to the outside. Wide open space and he can trot into the end zone for a game tying touchdown. And that was about as well called a drive as we've seen all weekend. Just kept the defense off balance throughout the entire drive. Terrific play calling, execution, all led by Patron and all the attention that he gets from the defense. They mix things up, set up their plays, hands off for the jet sweep. This time he keeps it when they think he's going to hand it off. Again, kept them completely off balance. That young man right there is hungry. He wants to win. And he's leading this team to tying this thing up here. Joey John Caspro is no good. So a pair of extra point misses keeps the game tied at six. You see great lead blocks at the point of attack. 56 gets a piece. 10 Viola gets a piece. They fake the handoff for the jet sweep, but he continues to go in that direction. So they fake the jet sweep, utilize the sweeper as an extra lead blocker. Then Patron is able to get to the outside, turn on the acceleration, and get into the end zone for six. He was untouched on that 18-yard touchdown run. And I love the play design, because not only do you get a fake out of the jet sweep, but he also turns into a lead blocker, a guy out in front with speed, gets a decent angle, eyes inside, it's a decent seal. Patron does a great job coming tight off that seal, turning on the Jets. You gotta love that burst. It took the opening drive from the 31 and marched down the field in four and a half minutes, I believe, in the second quarter. At one point you said, we have to see more from Hasbro Heights than a Frank Patron draw play. And we saw them mix it up there in the, on that series. Just, just very, very well done. Very impressive. If they could continue that throughout the game, they give themselves a great shot here. John Caspro. Short kick. Some running room here. Forward progress stopped. Hugh Rich, one of the up men, forced to bring it back as New Milford has the opportunity to answer here in the third quarter. And this is just kind of why we 
question going into the half, why not take a shot down the field? It's a closely contested game. Defense has played well. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you, you were just up one score. So now this game is knotted up. The pressure is back on your offense to go back out there and produce. First down, Christian Correa. For New Milford, very similar to Hasbrook Heights in terms of production. But it was that fourth drive, just two plays, 84 yards to the house for Correa. They're looking to continue to have some success here. Number 60, Ed Rynander, with a tremendous lead block and pancake into the field turf on the prior play. Second and seven. The toss to Correa. And something from that last graphic you mentioned, Todrick, the time of possession for Hasbro Heights, a lot of two-minute drives. But as for New Milford, they had a couple of drives of over four minutes. Correa, obviously, a big reason why. That's right. It looks like Correa just took a shot in the back from Jordan Wexler. Got up a little bit gimpy. Something to keep an eye on. Third and four. Run blitz by Hasbro Heights. Poorly timed as Pickenick finds McElroy for the first down. And I was waiting to see when they would get McElroy introduced to the offense. They utilize him on a lot of pop plays at tight end. Does a nice job catching the ball, squaring the shoulders up, and getting upfield. And he's such a big young man. He's tough to tackle. Uh, so just a tremendous play call. Nice way to mix that in and get him going offensively. Uh, which in turn will also get him going a little more so on the defensive side of the ball. Good protection for Pickenick. And I love the fakes in that prior play where they fake the toss after running toss the prior play and come with the pop pass. New Milford on the move. And they hand it off to old reliable Correa. But on this carry, he is swarmed. At the bottom of the pile for Hasbro Heights was Travis Culkin. McElroy does a nice job at tight end on that play, washing down the entire right side. But then the defense was able to fill, fill that space of the field. He got nudged before he even hit the hole, and any type of acceleration built up was lost. About five or six players corralling the offensive ball carrier. That's a great thing if you're a defensive coordinator. That's a worn-out jersey. A throw to the far side of the field. It is too tall for Farley. Brings up third and ten. Ball sails on the receiver. receiver. Wasn't able to get that great follow-through. Kind of wings the ball out there quickly. Doesn't quite step into it. Bracket coverage by Vicini and Viola. As Pickenick in a throwing down, facing a third and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. Correa, stutter step, falls forward for a couple, but well shy of the 27 yard line needed for a first down. And that was all due to the great push and bull rush from that left defensive end. Collapsed that side down. Didn't allow Correa to bounce that run outside. Had to be satisfied cutting that thing up inside where there was a ton of defensive help. Four down territory for New Milford. Gave it to Correa knowing that they'd have another down. And Correa split out at the bottom of the formation with Ryan picking it. Out of the shotgun, he throws incomplete. Looking for Reese Farley, who is well covered and overthrown again to give the ball back to the Aviators. And you saw New Milford on that drive. Also looked to open things up. A little bit of trickery. They took Correa and spread him out wide. Tried to pin the defense's attention on him. Then throw the seam route. But great job by the linebackers 
in their principles, staying engaged, staying focused, and not falling for the okie doke. Viola in good position and made sure everybody knew so as he gave a little bit of a finger waggle to let everybody know that this would not be completed in his area. Turnover on downs. Hasbrook Heights gets the ball back, starting at the 34. Patron breaking it to the outside. He'll step out of bounds after a good scrambling run. And again, the defense just loses Patron, who does a nice job with the fake handoffs. The defense isn't necessarily seeing it quite quickly enough. Eyes inside. See a little hold inside on McElroy. He was held on the left side of his body, which is why he wasn't able to get over the top and make that play. Four-yard pickup by Quattro. This drive starting at the 34. Their touchdown drive to open up the quarter began at the 31. Quattro slipping out the other way. Tries to outrun the defense, but tracked down by Anthony Rivera. Rivera showing great range. Had an absolute beat on that play. If he doesn't make that tackle, Patron could still be running. Darts to the sideline, wanting to turn those shoulders up. But this new Milford def defense didn't allow him to get square. And here's that trips look again. Third and three. They get four to game, setting up for a screen that is blown up from the beginning. Quattro wow. just threw it into open space. And another wrinkle. So this time they set up a screen away from the trips, away from their strength. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of success with it. Obviously there weren't enough blockers to account for all the defenders that got over the top of that play. But certainly an interesting wrinkle and something else for the new Milford defenders to think about. Punt formation for the Aviators. Purdy, the normal punter, is hurt. So Philip Cletus punts it away. It's a short kick in which New Milford clears the area. And they'll take over with under three minutes to go in the third quarter in a tie game of the North One Group One Championship. New Milford last winning titles in 1985 and 86. Bill Wild now in his 12th season. One of the most successful with eight wins of his decade plus tenure. Christian Correa hit hard near the line of scrimmage and who else? Travis Culkin rubbing off the numbers of his jersey by applying a big blow that now has Correa still down on the turf. And again, he was dinged up earlier in this ball game. He's been a gamer. He's kind of stayed in the game, but hasn't quite been right since then. They deliver another shot on him, and uh, he's still down on the ground. You got to hope he's all right. But I'll tell you, this Hasbrook Heights defense doing a nice job, laying multiple hits on him. I mean, there's a big-time running back who runs in between the tackles. I mean, that's the only way to slow a guy like that down who usually gets stronger as the game moves along. But you get to land those, those lasting hits on a guy like that throughout the game. You can certainly slow him down and give your team the best chance to win. Somewhat of a sigh of relief to see Correa pop up. Perhaps just needed a moment to gather himself. And, Todrick, you talked about that physical turning point 11 carries in the first quarter, and in the 22 minutes since, just eight. Right. But I'll tell you, there's physicality on both sides of the ball. We may need a pancake counter for Ed Rynander on that offensive line of New Milford, putting guys on their backs. Correa right now, without the TD, you're talking 18 carries for 66 yards, 3.6 per carry. Just the eighth pass attempt, and it's incomplete. As Milford running the ball compared to passing it at about a three to one ratio. As Correa comes back on the field, <laughs> that was brief. 
Correa missed just one play, and he has been the workhorse back for the Knights, as expected. Entered today's game second best in the state with over 2,200 yards, and he added 84 more to his total with this electrifying first half touchdown run. He certainly did, but again, back to the, the point. When the other 18 carries, only 66 yards, 3.6 per. So, uh, for the most part, this Hasbrook Heights defense has done a good job keeping him in front of them. Third and nine, Correa the target. Slips out of the first tackle. Keeps his feet alive. He is gang tackled down shy of the 47-yard line. And he is a tough kid, carrying defenders on his back. Just a diligent, tough high school football player who cares. Dinged up. If this were a regular season game where they're up two, three scores, he probably probably doesn't return to this ball game, but toughs it out. Looks 100% on this play where he's carrying guys and showing true grit. Fair catch called for incompleted. Viola had a bit more room than he might have anticipated. And so these teams trading punts here in the third quarter with the ball back to Hasbrook Heights. The Hasbrook Heights with a little momentum now offensively look like juggernauts to open up the second half after a subpar first half on the offensive side of the ball. Let's see if they can stay with it. I thought they called a great drive the last drive. Uh, they've got to continue to keep this new Milford defense uh, on their toes, have them second guessing themselves. Don't allow these guys to get their confidence back. They looked like they were on the ropes a bit on that last drive. Third drive of the quarter for Hasbro Heights. Frank Cotrone capped off the first one with an 18-yard touchdown to tie the game. And here he is on first down, slipping to the outside, and there goes Frank Cotrone. He's in a foot race down the sideline. Leaps over a tackler, and he's down at the 15. Again, great burst through the hole, great vision, recognition. Got to love the way he hedged at the end of this run to kind of freeze that defender while still picking up yardage. You felt like if they got that last block there, he got outside, he had a chance, and once he does, great vision. Look how he kind of hedges here, hedges, slows him down, slows him down, while picking up additional yardage up inside. Running into the shadows for 62 yards, and now he hands it off. John Ayorado gaining some extra yardage on the second effort. It's clear right now all the momentum is in Hasbrook Hikes corner. They have yet to lose a football game this year, so they have ultimate confidence in their abilities in these late-game situations and their ability to pull it out. And offensively, they've been fantastic compared to a slow first half. Under a half minute to go in the third. First man through is Ayorado to the perimeter, spinning into the end zone. Touchdown, Hasbro Heights. And when playing against such a tough defense, and you score on such a simple play, you know your offense is rolling, your offense is full of confidence. And they're going out there looking to get this thing done. Just a simple handoff out the offset eye. Ayorado does the rest with great determination, great power. Spins out of a tackle and gets to the end zone. Hasbrook Heights has taken the lead with two third quarter touchdowns. Chasing points here in the third, going for two. Ayorado motioned into the backfield. Patron with time, throws end zone. And a wide open receiver brings it in for two. I mean, where was all this play design in the first half? I mean. Whoever the play caller is looks like a magician here in the second half. 
Philip Clytus, who's in Josiah Purdy's spot. The senior coming up big in his final high school football game. All kinds of wrinkles and misdirection. Here's Ayorado on the finish in the end zone. Spins out of a tackle for six. Does a tremendous job with just determination. Beating the defender to the edge and not taking no for an answer on this play. Ayorado picks up a nice lead block on a much larger defender, which has been the theme of this game. Ayorado with a bigger heart than most guys out there in the field, which enables one to get in for a score. And I'll tell you, this Hasbrook Heights offense is in business. At this time of year, it's about the seniors. Senior quarterback Frank Patron with 62 yards on the run, setting up the senior John Ayorado for the nine-yard touchdown. And the two-point conversion was thrown to a senior, Philip Clitus, who is also a senior in a reserve role, playing a major part of this championship effort. Justin Maletta with a flag down. We have a block in the back on the receiving team. I think it's a great return there where he has some good field position. But back to Ayorado, I mean, eight carries for 62 yards and a score. He's done some of everything. Defensively, he's made plays. He's lead blocking, helping break big plays for teammates. You got to love those utility guys. You need at least one of those guys on every single football team. A guy who can fill in the gaps and make all the plays that nobody else wants to make. Who runs down the field and gets down first on special teams. That's the type of young man Ayorado is. 12th rushing touchdown of the season, giving the Aviators the third quarter lead. Eight seconds left. Christian Correa. A run to the boundary for about five. Still a one-score game. One possession. Obviously, you need eight to tie it up here. And Milford has to continue to fight, continue to find ways to move the ball offensively. Obviously, that's what Hasbro Heights has been able to do here in the second half. Be creative. And they've stumbled upon a great rhythm. New Milford not necessarily in that type of rhythm. Correa with 168 total yards. Screen complete. Reese Farley on the final play of the third quarter. Gets close to the first down sticks, but he appears to be short. Well, the Hasbrook Heights offense coming to live in the third quarter. The Aviators taking a 14-6 lead on the strength of two touchdowns. Quatron and then Ayorado and an eight-point lead after three. Heading to the fourth in the North One Group One Final on News 12 Varsity. Here at MetLife Stadium for the fourth quarter of the North One Group One Championship. Hasbrook Heights with a 14-6 win over New Milford. And our day here is just beginning. Let's take a peek at what is directly next. And that is the North One Group 5 Championship featuring our eighth best team in the News 12 Varsity Tri-State Pole. Ridgewood taking on the defending champs, Passaic Tech, in a rematch of last year's final matchup. To start things off in the fourth quarter, Christian Correa picks up a first down on third and one as he twisted across the line of scrimmage. With Todrick Hunt, David Resnick, Amanda Puglisi roaming the sidelines. Our entire News 12 varsity crew. In total, 10 games from MetLife. 18 games overall that you can check out on News12Varsity.com. Three more to follow after this North 1 Group 1 championship. One possession game here in the fourth. Fresh set of downs for New Milford who took a 6-0 lead before giving up 14 points in the third. Quick hitter to Farley. 
And one thing you certainly can't undervalue here is the tackling of Hasbrook Heights. Again, uh, the only score that they allowed was due to Correa being able to break some tackles downfield uh, despite guys being in position. But for the most part, uh, Hasbrook Heights has does, done a great job getting these guys to the ground. New Milford guys haven't been able to break that tackle besides Correa on that one play to get upfield and, and have that big play, that momentum swinging play that gives your offense confidence. Pitch Correa on second and six. Keeps his balance enough to pick up a few extra crucial yards, but he's marked out at 39. And again, a heavy dose of Correa, who's having a great individual game, but this Hasbrook Heights defense has bent, but they just haven't broken. Done a nice job keeping him in their sights. And when you got one main guy to prepare for, a lot of times you have that. And your goal for the day is to take that guy away. And once a defense does that, what are you going to do offensively? Who's going to step up? Who have we put in position as an offensive staff to step up and make some plays to help us out? Correa lines up slot left. This is the quarterback, Ryan Pickenick, running. He's out to the 44 and a first down for the Knights. Pickenick using that big, long frame to lean forward. Pick up that first down. Off the direct handoff. It's a nice crack back. Kind of jogs to the hole, falls forward, picks up the first. Correa, over 300 carries on this season, slips through into the secondary. Christian Correa with a big run into Hasbrook Heights territory. And slips being the ideal word for what he did down the field. Slipped the tackle with a real subtle jump cut. Used that offhand to brush the defender by. Kept his eyes down the field. Slipped another one. Just great vision here. Watch how he uses the offhand here to catapult that guy forward. Pick up an additional two yards at the end of the run. On first down, right back to Correa. Steps over a couple of bodies. He's down inside the 30. And that color neon is usually reserves reserved for speedsters <laughs> that's right but he's wearing it though as a bruising back that's right and it looks good on him I rattle stuck his hands in there on that play attempted to rip that ball out came out with it at the end of the play Correa called down on the field he would stick out regardless because of his play but even more so because of that color picked up six oh. This play was disastrous from the start. Big 45, Jordan Wexler, one of the guys to get up off of that pile. We'll see about five, six guys corral around the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. Just a completely blown play up front. Where the bigs got beat. The fullback, Kornberg, typically the lead blocker, was the first man through with the ball. Correa lining up to the bottom of the formation with just Kornberg in the backfield. Four wide receivers on third and six. Quick out to McElroy. He stumbles forward, but he's short of the first down marker. They're able to trip up those long legs of McElroy. When you're 5'5", 165, that's what you got to do to bring those big guys down. You can't take them on up high because they'll just run right through you. But if you trip them up down low, I don't care how big you are, you got no choice but to go down. Picanick with the quick hitter. Ayurado out of the linebacker spot. Great instincts to follow McElroy and close the gap. And McElroy, who's a tackling machine defensively, has to give a tip of the old helmet to Ayurado for his play there. As New Milford facing a fourth and four with... 808 remaining calling timeout because while there is still a lot of time a crucial play call upcoming And I think we certainly got it right when picking the impact players of this ball game Iorado Catrone on the Hasbrook Heights side obviously McElroy uh, doing some great things defensively And this is a great competitive ball game here if you're new Milford 
42 total play, plays. They've obviously leaned on and depended on big number 21. Only 16 plays to guys other than Correa in this ball game. So I think they need to find a way to sort of diversify down the stretch with all eyes on 21. Bootleg for Pickenick, and he picked up the necessary yardage. Oriema got him at the ankles, but Pickenick extending his frame forward on a huge fourth and four. And speaking of diversifying offensively, nice job utilizing all the attention that 2-1 gets to have that big quarterback roll out with the football. He's effective as a runner simply because he's a long strider. Isn't necessarily moving too explosively, but does a nice job leaning into those first downs. From the 24. Correa. Christian Correa on his feet with a cut to the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown, New Milford. Wow. What a great game. Christian Correa with his second touchdown today, 35 on the season. He was the decoy on fourth down. He was the go-to guy on first. And with a chance to tie New Milford lining up for two. They already ran a specialty play on fourth down on this drive. What's their best two-point play here for the tie? Snap too high, Pickenick. Can't pick it up, and Hasbrook Heights makes the stop. And certainly not what you want to see there. Personally, I've never liked getting into the shotgun down in the red zone. I, I just personally don't feel that's the area of the field to utilize that. But back to the awesome run by Correa. We were talking about getting the impact players right. And that fourth guy I didn't quite get to was Correa, who obviously was a great choice. Great lead block by nine. 56 getting in on the action down the field. Those are the guys that allow 2-1 to do what he does. Utilizes great vision. Finds the creases. Great flow. Rhythm. Still running hard. Unfortunately, back here to this potential two-point conversion play snaps the football over the quarterback's head doesn't give him a chance but that young man certainly gives him a chance 12 play drive over 82 yards culminating with Correa from 24 yards out which followed the fourth down conversion by the quarterback Ryan Pickenick but despite matching Hasbrook Heights with their second touchdown they're trailing by two with 734 to go in regulation. 2 ones not even breathing hard. <laughs> Remember he missed a play earlier this half. Just one after a timeout was called on his behalf. If he's hurting, he's not showing it. Viola slips down at the 37. And for Correa, this is his ninth game where he's broken the 200-yard marker. Durable, explosive, a finisher, great confidence, runs over defenders, and scores touchdown after touchdown. That's 35 on the season for that young man. Willing his team in a tough environment. Over 200 yards in back-to-back -back weeks in what should be the most difficult games of the season as part of the March to the North 1 Group 1 Championship. On first and 10 from the 36, two-point lead for Hasbrook Heights. And a run to the left for Frank Quatron. Quatron still juking and jitterbugging and finding that crease and hitting the hole. Following great lead blocks up front. Great vision off the direct snap. Gets a little power going. 10 doesn't necessarily make a play there. If he does, he allows... Patron to potentially square up, hit that hole, and get that football up the field. Hasbrook Heights 
won the inaugural New Jersey Interscholastic Conference Championship. They're under seven minutes away from a sectional crown. Ayurado, first down. Squeezes through the middle of the defense to move the chains. Well, sometimes those smaller guys are even tougher to tackle simply because you can't land a good square clean hit on them. Sort of slips through the gap. Gets skinny. I mean, even when he's not getting skinny, he's getting skinny at 5'5", 165, but certainly plays a lot bigger than that. Fresh set of downs from the 48. A chance to drain clock with the two-point lead. George Gaddis can't find a running lane. Asbrook Heights entered this championship weekend as one of just 13 remaining unbeaten teams. And great pursuit defensively by the Knights to string out this run. Absolutely. Great pursuit getting over the top. Multiple guys to the ball carrier. McElroy having himself a game. Somewhat up and down, but has made some plays here. Second and nine, Patron. Carrying the load once again for the Aviators. Approaching now five minutes to go in regulation. And the big men up front paving the way for the rushing attack of Patron, Ayarado, and company. What a second half this group has had as the Aviators have scored their only 14 points of the game after intermission. Obviously a huge, huge down here. Third and three. Ayarado keeps his balance. Surging forward, it's a first down. Absolutely stumbles to the first yard marker. Has a great nose for it. Knows exactly how far he has to get. and Keeps the lower body moving despite being off balance. Uses the off hand to keep the knee from going down and picks it up behind a great effort by the offensive line. Clock continues to move. Under five minutes to go. Well, guys, you know, we talk about this offensive line, and one of the things that makes them so great is the amount of time they spend watching film. On Wednesdays, that's known as the line night, and the offensive line, and they get together with their coaches, they order sandwiches and pizza, pizza, and they all watch and break down the film together. So, obviously, they spent a lot of time taking a look at New Milford this past Wednesday. That is good business for whoever gets that order. <laughs> line certainly. midnight? Certainly. That could prop up an entire business. And the Bills should probably have been on the quarterback and the running back. <laughs> As Correa makes a defensive play, showing his prowess on both sides of the ball here today. Second and 11 after a loss on first down. Patron gets to the edge. Breaking free to wide open space. Touchdown, Hasbrook Heights. You could just see the play developing. I'm sure they'll go for one here as it's already an eight-point game. And the extra point makes it a two-possession game. Just tremendous burst. As soon as he gets that direct snap, cuts hard to the left before the linebackers can get over the top. And that Hasbrook Heights offensive line doing a nice job getting to the second level, occupying linebackers. So they can't scrape quite as fast as they'd like to, allowing a great alley for Catron to hit. Timeout taken by Hasbrook Heights. Still just a one possession game. And they'll have an opportunity here with a PAT or a two point attempt to take that two possession advantage. For Frank Quatrone, his second touchdown of this half. And very similarly to the first one, he goes untouched into the end zone.
He does, but a key part of the play is the interior offensive lineman climbing to the second level of the play, occupying blo blockers, leaves him with one man to beat in a one-on-one -on -one situation where he has the advantage, squares his shoulders up once he hits that hole. By that time, the play is over with. He's going to score. Amanda told us that Hasbrook Heights, not just the players, but the entire community getting a police escort to MetLife Stadium, they might be feeling so terrific after this result, they'll just all be able to fly home together. You're talking <laughs> 24 carries, 220 yards, and two scores for number 11. I said he's having a pretty decent day. <laughs> the fans watch on this two-point attempt. Patron end zone. It is caught right at the line for two. A huge grab for Philip Viola as he goes full extension to reel it in. Interesting. I like to see that one again. I know Viola's feet were in the end zone, but where he caught the football in respect to where his knee was down. Not so sure. Let's take a look at this one here. Patron basically looks him down, and yeah, I, I'd say that was the right call. Does a nice job getting up underneath that football, rolling into the motion, getting his body up underneath it, sort of rolls the ball over the goal line towards the end of the play there. And they called it, they called it a score. Could see what you're saying initially because the hands went out to grab right. it outside of the end zone. Right. But right. when he brought it into his body and came down, no question breaking the plane. And it's not like the NFL where you have to actually touch a guy for him to be down. If that knee's down and that ball's outside the end zone, they probably shouldn't call that a score, but obviously puts it a bit more out of reach, making it a 10-score game. So I was thinking you go for one there, making it a two, a two possession game regardless, but got a little greedy there, got it anyway, not to more of a realistic two-possession game where if they get a score and a field goal, goal, it's still a tie ball game. Patron with touchdown runs of 18 and now 39. Justin Hudrich, an up man, being tugged at by the jersey with flags down. Purdy is out as the kicker, and so perhaps not wanting to put undue pressure. Holding on the receiving team on the reserves going for two which is much more of a team effort and so new milford backed up here after the hold on the return <laughs> 22 points in the second half for hasbrook heights as ryan Pickenick tries to orchestrate a comeback here in the fourth I'll, I'll tell you, these Hasbro Heights guys were doing a lot more than eating sunflower seeds at the half. They certainly got things together offensively. Defensively, they've been styled again. Uh, besides the one missed tackle on Correa, I mean, they've played a pretty perfect game here. Picanick on first down, rolls out and takes a shot down the field. A terrific effort by Reese Farley to bring in the ball. And they've got to go. And if you get in position for a field goal, you have confidence in your kicker, you take the points and go for the onside kick. Whatever you can do to get a score on the board, um, save some time, advance the opportunity for a second score here, but they've got to go fast. With seven and a half minutes left, New Milford scored a touchdown to pull to within two as the pass is thrown incomplete. The two-point conversion failed. And then on the very next drive, showing championship medal, Hasbrook Heights marches down the field and then a two-point conversion good on their end making it a 10-point game With the clock stopped with 306 to go it allows Picanick to run over to head coach Bill Wild He's out of the gun Picanick Steps up, throws, downfield, and Correa could not run underneath it. They used Correa earlier in the ball game as a bit of a decoy on the outside just to set up this play where they actually look to utilize him on the outside and 
just his overall ability to make plays over 200 yards on the day on 25 carries two scores the 17th multi touchdown game of his career officially 25 for 211 and two having himself a day you're gonna need a little bit more from him today to end up with this title here he's lined up in the slot right now because of the deficit can't come out of the backfields three snap fouls and so because New Milford is trailing you Dead slide ball, Correa foul. out wide full start on the offense five-yard penalty the against the Knights third and 15 not what you want here in this situation where you've got to go and go fast and take advantage of every single down four down territory of course needing 15 yards to move the chains on third, Picanic fires. Complete. It's over midfield. Tremendous catch by Reese Farley to extend the game. Picanic absolutely rips this football, steps into this throw with great follow through. A bit of a long release. And it flutters a bit there, but had the proper trajectory to get to the receiver. Farley jumping in front of Viola to claim the ball. Picanic back to the air. It's Farley again. 12 yards on the reception. Clock stops momentarily to move the sticks. New Milford driving here down by 10. Getting things going in the passing game. Six catches for Farley, 64 yards. McElroy. Wide receiver screen. Drags a tackler for about three yards. And after the short gain, New Milford forced to call timeout to preserve clock. You saw New Milford trying to go fast there. I mean, the one glaring weakness on this offense is they don't really have that jitterbug, you know, quick twitch, open field guy that can just kind of create something for you. You know, you throw him the football in the flat, he makes a couple guys miss, he gets up the field. Haven't seen a whole lot of that from him. Been a lot more methodical, uh, hard-hitting plays at the point of attack with Correa, where, you know, offensively, you, you line him up just to knock him down. Um, but haven't really been able to find that change of pace in this ball game, and it's allowed Hasbro Heights to really settle into things defensively. Q on Correa, who's had a magnificent game despite all the attention, but... He's pretty much the only player that's been able to beat them throughout the ballgame. You think they notice they're on the big screen here at MetLife? <laughs> Cheering for multiple reasons as Christian Correa has consecutive 200-yard rushing attempts in the playoffs. 226 a week ago, 211 today. Lines up in the backfield. The play fake is to him. Correa on the routes. The target. It's deflected and intercepted. Matt Dacharia running the other way for the Aviators. The ball came out after his knee was down. Hasbrook Heights football. Picanic was locked into Correa the entire time. And he had him, to be honest. He had him earlier in that route. But that throw was late. He didn't follow through, so it sailed on him. If you take a look here on the play action, he has him right here. Has him right here. It's about a second and a half too late on the release. Three defenders converge on the on the running back. The ball is high. Gets tipped up in the air. Leads to a pick for Hasbrook Heights, whose defense has been outstanding. Another senior. Jacharia with the interception. Quatrone navigates his way through the line. Approaching two minutes to go in the fourth. It was a 6-0 deficit. Hasbrook Heights scored on the opening drive of the third quarter to tie the game at six. Took the lead later in the third. Faced off a challenge, fended off a challenge from New Milford after the Knights pulled to within two. 
and the game-sealing drive on the last possession to take a 10-point lead. It was Catrone who found the end zone again. Second and five. Ayorado leaning forward. He's out to midfield. Ayorado has this distinct ability to be falling down, leaning forward, completely off balance and out of position to make a play, but he keeps that lower body moving and he's still able to pick up four or five yards after completely losing his balance. Um, and I guess essentially he's not losing his balance if he's staying on his feet and finishing those plays. Does a nice job sniffing out that first down marker and giving everything he's got to get there. Undefeated seasons in 1976, and then again in 2007 for Hasbrook Heights, their last section title victory. And now a chance to complete a perfect 11-0 season, just 122 away from the third section championship under Nick Del Calzo, who is coaching in his 32nd year and leading his alma mater. And it took a lot more effort than the prior games this season where on average Hasbrook Heights had beaten teams by an average of 31.8 points and won by at least 40 points in half of its games. The seniors especially responding to the challenge carried by Frank Quattrone. The exclamation point for Hasbrook Heights. Touchdown, Aviators. And Quattrone with a career high rushing total here today in a state championship game talk about a dream day for a young man in high school going out there showing his worth and I mean his burst is just unbelievable they do a nice job making plays at the point of attack everybody gets involved on the action receivers linemen they seek out guys to block get good seals and Catron does the rest of the work 275 yards on the day. John Caspro for the PAT. Boots that one wide of the uprights. So the score remains 28 12 in favor of Hasbrook Heights. Three rushing touchdowns for the quarterback, Quatrone. 26 now on the season and before the team roughing the kicker on the Milford roughing the kicker call so we'll see if they can retry the down or if this will just be assessed at the kickoff Nick Del Calzo wants an explanation. More than three decades leading his alma mater. And maybe the sweetest season of all when you consider the undefeated year, the New Jersey Interscholastic Conference Championship to come away with a North One Group One title as they still try to sort out the penalty. Frank Quatrone, dual threat quarterback, he has done a little bit of everything today. He certainly has, and <laughs> or a lot of bit of. Yes, yes, absolutely. He's been a magician. It eclipsed his previous rushing total high of 60 yards in this ball game at 275, and he's just been everything to this ball club. He and I Arado have had magnificent games here today, uh, along with all the other blue-collar workers who have made plays, that offensive front that's climbed to the second level. This has been a complete team effort, but you certainly have to recognize the efforts of a couple guys like Quatrone and Ayorado who have just been magnificent. Quatrone on the gadget play for two. Why not? Oriema in the end zone. And Got to feel like that was a little bit of a jab. Uh, going to such an interesting play call with the game securely out of reach. Must not have liked that late hit there. In the home of the Giants. <laughs> that was a little, little Giants, no? Yes. A variation of yes. the annexation of Puerto Rico? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> 
uh, worked so well. I'll tell you, that muddle huddle is, is, is really something that you have to look to prepare for. There's so many different things you can do with it, and uh, it's just so many opportunities to score in so many different ways. In it. So well, everybody lined up to the right. Yep, and we'll go back to the creativity here. I mean, I don't even know how to call that play. Let's just say it was fun to watch. <laughs> Not quite so fun uh, for that new Milford bench. Uh, I'm sure they weren't too happy about uh, that offensive display, but at the end of the day, it's, it's your job, job to step up and shut those plays down. That's got to be a play you run in the spring, in the summer. The type of play that you have in your back pocket because it's fun to run. And then you get to deploy it at MetLife Stadium to put an even bigger capper on what has become a dominant second half performance. As we look at Patron, who's obviously had a heck of a day, it was Clank who actually threw the touchdown on the interesting two-point conversion play. And Hasbrook Heights, man, they've really rolled since intermission. I'd love to know what they talked about at the half. Uh, they came out a completely different team with a renewed focus, uh, renewed confidence, mixed things up offensively, defensively. They've been great. It's just been a well-rounded game for that group. And, um, they've got a lot to be proud of, and so does New Milford. New Milford has had a ter terrific season. They're going to end up... 8-3 and three here. A lot of hard-nosed play. Talented football team with great prospects for the future. Christian Correa gets the carry. Stays on his feet. Out to midfield. What a day that he has had. And he may possibly eclipse the day Quatron has had on the ground. Obviously, he doesn't care about that. He'd, he'd much rather have the win, but he's churned out yardage as well. Just a magnificent display of offense from our two offensive impact players that we highlighted to start the game. They certainly haven't disappointed, and neither has the game overall. Despite the score kind of getting away from New Milford, this has been a competitive ball game that sort of fell apart late. Sometimes when you're in this thing and you're competing so hard and it starts to get away from you, it kind of it's kind of a letdown. And uh, you just can't really do anything about it. You just don't react to things as quickly as you were. And things start to fall off. And the score looks, starts to look a little bit more uh, imposing than the actual game was. Final seconds coming off of the clock. Despite being separated by just seven miles, the first matchup between Hasbro Hikes and New Milford since 09. And it ends in the Aviators' favor. Hasbrook Heights, state champs in 2016. And that was about as thorough of, of an effort as you could look to, to have in the second half of a ball game. I mean, Quint's essentially perfect in the second half. Correa got going a bit. Had himself a day, obviously, but just wasn't quite enough. They weren't able to identify that additional playmaker to sort of take the focus from that Hasbrook Heights defense. They were able to cue in on Correa, who, despite really getting off today, it just, just wasn't quite enough. 30-12, to 12, the final score in favor of Hasbrook Heights. North one, group one champs here at MetLife Stadium. And for a couple of programs that know each other quite well, we started things off by saying they scrimmage each other. The coaching staffs are familiar with each other. They haven't played, though, in quite some time. But they renewed their series here in the biggest stage of them all in New Jersey football. And the second half effort led by Frank Quatrone, you keep harking back on it. What was said in the locker room, this was a different team in the second half. And, and I'd love to know exactly what was said. <laughs> Again, these guys were doing more than <laughs> just staring at each other in the locker room. I mean, they certainly uh, came up with some great halftime adjustments and uh, were able to really embark upon all the different things they had success with in the first half. 
again, I love the trips formation, the multiple things they were able to do and really open up things offensively in the second half. 30 to 20, the final score. All points scored by Hasbrook Heights after halftime. They take down New Milford to complete a perfect 11 and 0 season. We wrap up the Aviators Championship in the North One Group One section right after this. The final from MetLife Stadium in the North One Group One Championship. Hasbrook Heights takes down New Milford 30 to 12 in a comeback effort led by their quarterback Frank Quatrone, who is standing by with our Amanda Puglisi. Thanks, David. You know, Frank, an undefeated season, state champs that you guys finish here at MetLife. Is this everything you dreamed of when you were a little kid playing football? I mean, we had three goals this season. One, to win the league title, two, the conference championship, and three, the state. And we made all three. Great job to my teammates. All 11 guys on the field did it and made this possible. You know, and you had a career day as far as rushing goes. You scored touchdowns. You did everything today. How are you so dominant? Offensive line. The offensive line did everything for me. They did an outstanding job. Guys like Sean O'Malley, guys like Ian Harrington, Dylan Freshy. Great job up front. Another reason why I got so many rushing Thank you. Yeah. Nothing, nothing would have been possible. You guys were really a, a completely different team in the second half. What was the message at halftime and what, what did you guys change? The message at halftime was everybody knew they had two quarters left in this jersey. All the seniors knew. Two quarters left in orange and black. We came together as a team. We came out with, with fire. And that's how we were able to come out. That second half. Now on Thursday, while you guys were doing your walkthrough, we were here taping one of our shows, and we ran into your mom, and she said that you were going to have a great game today and that you guys were going to win. And she said something about cookies. After every single game, she makes batches and batches of cookies, and she gives them to the team. And she thinks that's the reason why we won, and I think so too. Well, Frank, congratulations. Go enjoy those cookies and enjoy this moment with your Thank team. Thank you very much. Thank you. David, I wonder if we can get some of those cookies. I don't know about you. I'm kind of hungry. Bake goods are always a very good motivation. <laughs> that, along with halftime desperation, the winning formula for Hasbrook Heights. 30 to 20 is the final, and this is how we got to this point. During halftime, the numbers were pretty even, and over the course of the game, they were that way as well, just timely plays by the Aviators. Right, a relatively well-played game. You see 16 first downs for New Milford, 18 for Hasbrook Heights. A bit of a deficiency in the rushing yard category for New Milford, who ends up with 247 to Hasbrook Heights, 361. That's Catrone really got going. Uh, 275 for three scores and really led this team across the finish line in the second half. Touchdown runs of 18, 39, and 50 for Frank Quatrone. A police escort brought Hasbro Kites to the game, and now they go back home with a perfect 11-0 record and a North 1 Group 1 championship. Victors over New Milford, 30-12. to 12. For Amanda Puglisi, Tadra Hunt, and our entire News 12 Varsity crew, I'm David Resnick. Thanks for watching the NJSIAA on News 12 Varsity. Hasbro Heights takes down New Milford 30-20. They are champs in 2016.